Hello and welcome. This is a spring edition of What to Plant in the Garden on behalf of the Melton City Council and uh, the Learning Directory. My name is Craig Castry and uh, I'll lead you through today's topic. Um, at the moment, I'm starting to plant tomato seeds and I recommend everyone starting to get a good jump on spring and, and early summer to start them now because uh, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it's really a good time of year to start them. So, but it is a little cold still. So what I would recommend is that you start them either indoors or on a nice little sunny spot, um, perhaps on the, on the kitchen windowsill or somewhere that's gonna get a little bit of sun and, uh, and, and raise them until they're about this size. And then you can start and either pot them up, um, depending upon where you are. Um, generally, and I'm in the West of Melbourne, so obviously we're, we're still fairly cool. So it's not a bad idea to pot them up and get them to about you know 20 centimeters or so tall if you can get them that far uh, before you put them in the ground now when to put them in the ground is is key and uh, i'll talk about that shortly um one of my cash cries is what goes well on the plate together goes well on the ground together so with tomatoes it's really good idea to start and plant think about planting some basil along with it um, also some spring onions or garlic now garlic should have gone in the ground and i would have mentioned this in back in autumn um, but Nonetheless, I mean, if it's still too late, it's not, not, not too bad to plant some garlic. Now, you won't get a big dip bulb um, from it, but, but it will certainly help in that group of plants. So tomato, basil and garlic is a marriage made in heaven on the plate. So it's always good to get them in the ground as well. Now, once you've grown them on, and that this is about the size that I like to pop them in the ground, and that's only in a small 50mm um, um, tube, basically. So dig a great big hole, uh, when I say great big, much bigger than you would need for the root ball. And I put a small amount of soil in the bottom with, a, uh, sorry, a little bit of fertilizer in the bottom, preferably a palletized manure of some sort like dynamic lifter or something similar, a little bit of soil over the top of that so that you don't sit bare roots on raw fertilizer and then backfill the hole. Now I'm going to actually um, fill about two thirds of that uh, hole up. Uh, so I'll be covering some of those leaves and uh, there it is, it's buried. And you can see the, let me zoom in here so you can see the, the label. I put the label over the root ball. Now what's gonna happen is um, in the next few days, this will start and grow straight up like so. And along those stems, they will grow roots down into the ground. So, uh, and you'll find that this will be a great start for uh, your tomato plants. And uh, of course, I then put, the stake on this side. I never ever put the stake over the root ball end. So let's move on. Marigolds are another one that I always always include with my tomatoes, basil, and so forth in that group. So I and I never ever plant my tomatoes together because you instantly put them into competition for food, water, and light. So it is very very important that you 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 make sure that you don't. Um, you uh, don't plant them together because if one gets a pest or a disease, they all get it. And ultimately, because of that competition, when you're watering, you really can't control over how much one gets versus another. Now, the, the marigolds are very important because they actually attract um, in pollinating insects, but they also ward off some of the sap sucking insects, things like um, thrip and white fly and the like, you know, so they're a valuable plant to have. They also keep nematodes away in the soil which tomatoes are susceptible to. Uh, as you can see, this is in a wicking bed. Um, basil at the bottom, a bit of spring onion, marigolds, a little bit of blue flowering lobelia, and, um, and of course, another gold colored marigold over there. So that's the group that, that, uh, that I'm talking about, making sure. Now, where to plant them? So you don't necessarily need to find full sun for tomatoes. You know, tomatoes in their natural habitats are vines, and they actually grow on the outskirts of forests. Now, this is on the south side of my house. And as you can see, um, the afternoon sun is being cast across the back and um, it, this wall is shading them. So this is right up against the south wall. So as you can see, and they're producing quite a lot of nice tomatoes. The plants aren't suffering. And as you can see, marigolds, basil. And think about when you're planting your tomatoes, what else you would pick if you were going to put a salad in the, you know, put a salad together. Now, it might be a couple of different varieties of lettuce. So make sure you include those in that group, you know, some spring onions, um, as I say, the basil, maybe a couple of different varieties of basil, might be a Greek basil 
a Genovese basil, um, maybe a sweet basil or a Thai basil. Could be all three of those. Um, you know, maybe some cucumber nearby. So that's the sort of group. But again, and, and as you can see, I've got um, tomatoes distance apart. They're about 1.5 to 1.8 metres apart. So never, ever right beside one another, separated by the plants. Um, whilst we're talking about, um, you know, shadier uh, spots, uh, bok choy and pak choy, uh, these wonderful Asian greens are really easy to grow. Um, they're uh, a very quick crop to grow. And of course, whilst it's still cool, they certainly suit your garden right now. So while you're waiting for the, the, uh, the things like tomatoes and capsicums and eggplants and so forth to get to that time, and I'll talk about the time to plant tomatoes in a minute, um, you know, you could be growing these wonderful Asian greens and they're a, a, a great way of being able to provide a quick burst of food, you know, um, whilst you're waiting for all the, uh, the, all the things to come into play. Now, back to planting tomatoes, make sure that you're looking for seven overnight low temperatures above 10 degrees. And that should give you um, an, an adequate soil temperature in the ground to be able to plant your tomatoes. Now, this is another one of those Asian greens. This is a wonderful coriander. And uh, this is another one that you could also plant, interplant into those groups where you think you might be planting um, tomatoes, plant some of these nearby. Um, and as I say, make good use of this cooler weather at the moment whilst you're waiting for it to warm up. Of course, in the warmer weathers, the warmer weather, things like uh, coriander will try and bolt and go to seed. Uh, likewise, will it, uh, will it also do on things like the um, bok choy and pak choy. They're really shade loving plants. So uh, well, that's not to say you can't grow them over the warmer months, you can, but you need to make sure that you don't keep, keep them in full sun. So you'll find that wider leaf plants have uh, forest dwelling plants and they don't really like a lot of full sun. Snow peas and sugar snap peas are another thing that you can absolutely be getting into the ground right now. Of course, you, you're going to need um, a stake or a small teepee or some sort of structure to grow them over. Um, making sure that on a daily basis, you get out there and make sure that you don't have any, if you've got any yellow leaves um, or aging leaves toward the bottom of these plants, just come out there and cut them off. Don't pinch them off, cut them off with a pair of sharp uh, secateurs or scissors would be okay. Um, mainly because and you should do this really on all of your plants, particularly as we start to get into that warmer month um, the warmer months, should I say, as spring starts to warm up um, and we had head into summer, anything that's yellow, dead, diseased or damaged generally tends to attract in insect attack. So keeping your garden very free of anything that is a little yellowing or dying off will help you keep pests away. They don't actually like the, uh, the enzymes that are in healthy leaves and yet the, um, the leaves that start to age and go a bit yellow um, put out a, a chemical smell that they that attracts them in. So that's a, a good tip to remember. Things like zucchini is uh, another wonderful plant to be growing at this time of year. There's quite a few different varieties, as you can see, the gold, the normal green, and then there's a, um, a um, I can't remember the name of this particular one, but it's a, it's a wonderful uh, European type, um, European type zucchini and uh, fairly easy to grow again. Another one that's very vital that you make sure that you don't get out in full sun, wide leaf plant. So it makes a good understory plant generally. Um, and uh, of course, making sure that you keep the, um, the older yellowing leaves off these plants because you'll find that they are, are very susceptible to things like uh, fungal attack, um, things like mildew and the like. So keeping all of that sort of stuff off your plants and you certainly don't want um, mildew flowing around your garden in the breeze. It's very, very fine. You can't see it and it, it will go everywhere. So uh, making sure, as I say, that to take those uh, leaves off. Cucumbers. Now, cucumbers you can grow in a variety of different types. There are small bush type uh, cucumbers. Um, there are obviously the vines that you'll grow, again, a bit like uh, snow peas and sugar snaps, where you may need to provide a structure. A good one to grow them around the outside of is corn. Of course, we're also headed into uh, that, that season. It's still a bit early yet. So a lot of those warmer um, summer crops really 
you know, in in the, in about another month or two, I would be starting to look at planting corn, uh, and I would sow that direct. And then generally around the outside of a corn crop, you could grow pe peas and beans. Uh, remember that catch cry that I have: what goes well on the plate together goes well on the ground together. So peas and corn on the plate, or beans and corn on the plate, really go hand in hand. And what happens is that the corn is a nitrogen hog and it, and it takes a lot of nitrogen down to the soil. And because you have to grow that in blocks, so I tend to grow it about 150 millimetres apart or 15 centimetres apart, roughly. Um, and I put four corn one way and four the other. So a block of about 16, roughly. And that way, because they're wind pollinated, when the wind blows, they, they, they brush up against one another and they get pollinated properly. But growing the beans and peas on the outside is a really good thing to do because they grow nitrogen on their, the root nodules of, their, uh, of the plant. And it gives back the soil and the corn the nitrogen that it takes out. And of course, the corn provides a structure that the beans and peas will climb. And you won't have to worry about putting in a trellis. And if you grow some cucumbers around the outside of that, that'll actually help shade the soil to keep it a bit warmer, a bit cooler um, and stop the dehydration. So good, good little uh, marriage there and uh, on the plate as well as in the ground. Capsicums are another one, of, of course, also chilies, just like tomatoes, not bad to start now, mainly because they're a bit slow growing and they take a bit of time to, uh, to take off. So if you can get them up, start it inside. If you've got a heat mat or a small little mini glass house or small greenhouse, that would be ideal. Um, they're fairly inexpensive these days. You can get them on eBay. I bought one not so long ago with a thermostatically controlled probe that you put in the soil and set the temperature and away they go. So they're fairly cheap. So look those up. Um, but as I say, there, there are a myriad of, of different varieties, tall, small, and everything in between with regard to uh, capsicums. And as you can see, lots and lots of colours um, to boot. So And some like them hot and some do not. So um, you've got everything to choose from. There's even some sweet capsicums along with some of the Hungarian peppers and the like, you know. So eggplants are another one. They're also in the same family as capsicums and tomatoes. They're in the Solomon family. So again, because they're fairly slow growing, they're another one that really should be started now so that you get them up, germinated and started to be grown on a little bit so that they're well and truly ready to go in the soil once you get those seven overnight low temperatures above 10 degrees. And that will give you, as I say, the right soil temperature. Uh, likewise, don't plant any of those grouped together. You tend to keep them apart because they can sometimes cross-pollinate, so you don't really want that. And um, more to the point, you, you probably want to give some consideration to ensuring that uh, you get some of those companions around them uh, as well. Look, you, there's lots and lots of places you can get companion plant lists. You don't necessarily need um, uh, books to do that with. However, having said that, if you're lucky enough or have got a copy of one of my books, Edible Gardens, A Practical Guide or Plant Profiles, there's um, comprehensive lists in there. You can download them free on the internet too. So, you know, they're just as, uh, just as uh, easy to get. Uh, beans is another great one. I just mentioned those before with the, uh, the corn and so forth, but it's not a bad time to start beans. Some of the dwarf beans will do really well at this cooler part of the year and the or larger type growing beans. I generally wait until my corn is about, about knee height, about 60 centimetres tall in the ground. That's when I'll plant around the outside of it with some, um, some climbing beans. So that's not a bad tide to, uh, to use. By the way, that's basil coming up there to the right of those beans. Uh, yeah, so strawberries. Um, great time of year to get your strawberries in. Um, there are so many different varieties out there, I can't begin to, to, to tell you. Um, so um, if you can get a hold of some named varieties and taste them before you get them, because they are very, very different. Those really, really small ones that sort of look a bit egg-shaped in amongst these are, are called um, alpine strawberries. Now, um, Diggers Club online have those, and they are one of the sweetest, uh, they say, you know, good things come in small packages. Let me tell you, I've never ever tasted such an intense perfumed strawberry flavour like 
for these guys to deliver. So, um, but you, you, you're not going to get a lot, as you can see. The small, the, the fruit is quite small. Um, so, if you're looking to sort of dress a pavlova, perhaps think again, maybe get a a, a better grower. But um, look, they, they're not bad in the ground, but they're also a great one for in hanging baskets. And I, I use them on in half pots on the fence. So um, utilising vertical space if you uh, if you're a bit short of it. So as oh next slide there we go. So that's how I grow mine. And I've actually got a um, an irrigation pot over the top pot. They're strategically placed underneath one another so that they uh, flood fill and irrigate uh, one another. So good way of doing it on a timer. Timers are cheap these days also. You know battery operator you don't need anything. Um, too elaborate these days to uh, to get that done for you. Carrots are another great one to be able to plant. Um, I generally sow these direct in the soil. Again, probably just a fraction a fraction uh, early just yet for a good spring crop of carrots, but uh, not far away. Beetroot is always a spot for beetroot. Um, one of the things that I like to say is that uh, if there's if I can pull a weed out, there's a spot for a beetroot or a lettuce. So, and I know what I'd rather be pulling out. I'd rather be pulling out beets and lettuce. So pull out your weeds and replace them with beetroot and lettuce if you like them. Um, this is one you can grow all year round and it's a fantastic little vegetable, not often widely known here called kohlrabi and uh, good in stir fries, um, casseroles and so forth. It's a, a really good vegetable to try. Easy to grow, grows in all sorts of soils. An interesting looking plant. You can get them in purple colours as well. So uh, look them up. Uh, it's not just about planting um, our veg, of course. Don't forget to plant some attractive little flowers here and there. There are myriads of them. Uh, go to your local nursery and look them up. Uh, Lobelia are those beautiful purple mauve or blue uh, flowers. The snap, mini snapdragons are fantastic. They will help increase the diversity in your garden and attract in all the beneficial insects that you need. Things like pollinators, predators, and the like, you know, very, very important. Um, don't forget to overplant. Um, you know, I've got lots of stuff going on in here. I've got um, radishes coming up as seedlings. I've got uh, at the bottom, very bottom of the screen, uh, either side is some spinach. There's some beetroot in between those two spinach. And then there's the radish coming up. And then there's lettuce either side, one red, one green, and so on. Marigold, there's some leeks being put in there. So, but what's going to happen here is that in six weeks, I'll harvest, well, I'll well and truly have harvested the spinach in four weeks. In six weeks, I'll have harvested the radish that's coming up. Um, beetroot will take some months before that's ready. So that will that's a long-term plant. The, the leeks will also take some time. In about three or four weeks, uh, sorry, about six to eight weeks, I'll have harvested the lettuce and so it goes. So there's always something coming on in the garden. So don't be frightened to put too much in. Um, of course, adding diversity, this is how an edible garden really should look. So you haven't got things um, uh, in rows and, you know, plant, plant other, get that diversity happening in your garden. That way you'll, you will absolutely limit the amount of pests that you'll grow. So, well, folks, well, I hope that you have a fantastic spring. I, I guess I'll be back in summer to give you uh, the heads up on what to plant. Um, if you would like a copy of my books, they're available on www.craigcastry.com.au. I need to buy for me. Bye for now. All the best.